Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of this Economy Power King Tractor Restoration Project. Today we're going to be covering various things. First thing I want to cover is the rims. <clears throat> People find these rims or get these rims and they're all rusty and everything. The first thing I want to do is throw them away and buy new aftermarket ones. Well, the aftermarket ones are a lot thinner, not as heavy duty, and simply isn't the quality. And you need to look because at the manufacturer of the rim before you throw it out, it could have a significant uh, value difference in the value of your tractor when you get done. So if you look at that right there, that says FH. Well, that's important. FH stands for French and a heck. Uh, and they made rims from 1909 to 1947. Uh, but they sold out in 1947 to another company. Uh, so if you can save these rims, they're definitely going to make a big difference on the value of your tractor, especially when you're trying to do a restoration project. So don't just stop and chuck these rims and put uh, the cheap ones on there. Make sure you know what you got before you do that. Which takes us to the front rim. Now these come in 8 inch and 12 inch. And this one, if I can get it in there, there's a part number for it. But it's stamped right there, EWC. EWC just happens to stand for Electric Wheel Corporation or Electric Wheel Company, which is who bought out the other wheel company. So both of these are original to the tractor and you could have eight inch, you could have 12 inch, and I'm not sure how many different rim configurations and manufacturers they used on these tractors, but it's extremely important as far as the value of your tractor that if you have these rims, these rims are very difficult to get, very desirable, uh, and you never see them come up for sale. And this company is mainly known for making the spoked rims for all the vintage tractors. So if you got these rims, keep them. Now this particular tractor came with ag tires on it, which makes a difference. Yours may not, you may came with turf tires or something. It's hard to say, you know, they're all different. And the next thing is your clutch. Clutch parts, people seem to have a hard time getting these clutch parts. Well, you can get a new clutch from Fort Wayne Clutch Company if you have the six inch clutch. Fits from 1946 to 1984, and there's your part number right there. So you can get it in a complete kit or you can buy the parts for them individually. The second thing is the other half of the clutch here that goes on the crankshaft. Now this thing has a factory problem. Down inside there, and you can see a lip down inside there, a snap ring goes in there. So it slides on the crankshaft and bottoms out on the crankshaft right there to stop it from sliding any further. Well, that was part of the problem I had of getting the thing off. That, sam that snap ring was sandwiched in between the pulley there and the crankshaft, so it made it difficult to get off of there. So that's, that was really a poor design. And these things come in two groove and three groove, so they're not all the same. Uh, my solution for that is a bushing. I'm not going to use the snap ring. I got this bushing right here. It's an exact fit. You just have to cut it to length uh, so you don't have to worry about wobble or anything and then you don't have to worry about the snap ring. Getting that snap ring out came out in pieces. I mean it was next to impossible then putting another one in there unless you have some specialized tools would be really hard. Well this way you can just eliminate the snap ring altogether. And, uh, you know, it depends on what motor you got. So I can't guarantee you that all you guys are going to have the same ones. I mean, these things came in several different configurations. But for the Kohler K321, I got that from bushings.com. And there's your part number. And then you have to cut it to length. Another thing you have to do is there's a pilot bushing up in there in the middle of your road just to get to that. Well, the old one was worn completely out. And it's extremely important that you have that in there. And there's a small felt seal in front of that. And what I did on the felt seal is I drilled two holes in it, put two big long sheet metal screws in it, and then pried it out of there with a small crowbar and then drilled a big hole on both sides of the bushing to get that out of there. But to put it in there, it has to be in a very specific spot. It needs to be right down, as far down on that shaft as you can get it. Uh, it just slides over the shaft here. And it's a pretty specific fit and that keeps your shaft from wobbling. So you, you've got to have that in the right spot. And the way to do that is you're going to take a piece of cardboard here. You're going to cut it out, slide it over the shaft and then install it on there. The cardboard will slide back on your splines here as far as you need it to go when you pull it back off. And then you can measure from there to the tip. 
to find out the proper measurement for where you need to place this bushing. And you want the bushing in as far as you can get it. Mine ended up, you can see it was all the way out to the tip. Well, that's no good. You, you need it in between there. So that's the way that you can solve that. Now, these things come with several engines and several different configurations. Again, mine's a Kohler, has a factory defect or a poor design here. This is where the main crank seal goes in. Well, there's no lip there to hold the seal in place. You can see someone took a ball peen hammer and beat the crap out of it to make a lip there to keep the seal from falling out. Well, you can see I machined all that out of there and tried to clean it up as best as I can. But you take your seal and you put it in from the back. Then you take some of that JB weld there and you put it around the seal on the front of it. The seal's rubber on this, so it won't stick to it. Uh, and then you take a Q-tip and go all the way around it and make a real thin, nice, clean edge all the way around on the face of the seal. And that'll harden up. And then if you ever have to replace the seal again, you can pound it out to the inside and there'll be a lip there for it to land on when you take it back out or put it back in. I always mix speak here and there on these things. I mix up drain plugs with fill plugs. I always make some kind of screw up somewhere. So you'll have to read between the lines sometimes. I, I end up making mistakes. I'm, I'm human. And then the other thing I want to talk about, about this tractor that makes this tractor special above all the others, and not just the rims. And I forgot to mention that this 12-inch uh, rim here, uh, the ag tire for this is a very specific size. It's only a 2.5-inch wide rim, so it's a 400 by 12 tire. Everybody screws up and puts a 530 by 12 tire or something on it, but it's a special ag tire. It's made by a company called Carlisle, and there's your part number for it and it's specifically for this tractor. Last thing I want to talk about that makes this tractor special is the seat. Now this tractor, as you can see, has sat out in the field for years and years and years. I mean, it's just in bad shape. I'm just going through the war trying to fix it. Uh, but one piece at a time, I love the challenge. But a few of these tractors have a separate seat back or a backrest, which this one does. The seat pan goes right there, bolts onto the frame right there, and the backrest bolts on right there, and you can see it just up and down with three small uh, bolt holes there. So if you get one with the backrest on there, I have seen very few of these, I almost never see one. Even on the internet, if you see one, uh, it won't be a lot of them. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things that could make your particular tractor special. Uh, it just depends on what you're looking for. Now, when it comes to books, they make a lot of these reproduction books. Well, that's a real problem actually, because your owner's manual is specific to your serial number. So when you buy these books online, you gotta make sure that they're listing them by serial number. And even if you get one for your serial number, like I have here, it still might have four or five, six different variations and different things on them, uh, depending on the book itself, and you can see in this picture that it shows the ag tires in it. Um, now, one thing I've run into is sometimes at the tractor shows and different things, I run into a guy that pretends to know what he's talking about. We refer to these guys in the uh, tractor shows as manure spreaders. I, I hate to down anybody on this, but... These guys are irritating. They, they get all their information out of books. The books are mainly wrong. They don't talk about any of the stuff I'm telling you about right now. Uh, and it's not a one size fits all. So you can pick those guys out. We can spot them a mile away. Uh, they get all their information out of books. They've never read or uh, wrenched on a tractor. They just read about them and then want to give everybody information on them. So you got to be aware of those guys, especially online. Uh, they might be giving you a bunch of misleading or incorrect information that, that just doesn't work. So anyway, that's uh, it for today. Uh, I hope you're finding these videos helpful. This is video number five and good luck with your project.